What's up guys, Moin360 here with a full in-depth review of the Apple iPhone 6. So this is one of the hugely anticipated devices of 2014. So it's finally here and it's packing a lot of new features and changes we've never seen before in the history of the iPhone line. For starters, the new iPhone 6 starts at $199 for the baseline 16GB model with a two-year carrier agreement. Or you can also purchase it contract-free starting at $649 and the one I have here is the 16 gigabyte gold contract free version of the iPhone 6 in addition to gold you also have the option to get space gray and silver for additional color choices so let's begin with the hardware and design so the design of the 6 is obviously a huge departure from Apple's design strategy for previous generations most notably you can see how the edges are curved now similar to the iPod touch for example instead of these distinctive sharp edges from iPhone's years past. With that glass front that's curving towards the edges to create that round look, I am personally not a big fan of this change, simply due to the fact that round edges on the sides makes it harder for my hands to grip the device, so I'd much rather just have the distinctive sharp edges on my HTC One, for example, to hold instead of the curved edges on the iPhone 6. The front and back of the phone has a pretty smooth texture to it. Even though I like how it feels, I still think this is uh, this material, especially the aluminum back, might just be a bit slippery to grip, but it's really not that big of a deal. The iPhone 6 is also Apple's thinnest phone to date. It only has a thickness of 6.9 millimeters, so it's incredibly thinner than its predecessor. It also has a height of 5.44 inches and a width of 2.64 inches. It only weighs 4.5 ounces, so even though the overall device has a larger footprint now, it actually feels really lightweight, which is nice. It still retains the superb metal build quality for the most part, with the exception of these white lines, which are for the antennas. So minus the curved edges, the iPhone 6 has a pretty solid build quality in my opinion. But nonetheless, the iPhone 6 just feels really fragile in the hand, mostly, I think, because of how thin it is, so you'll definitely want a protective case and that kind of goes without saying for pretty much all iPhones. The other significant change was to the display which Apple gave the branding as the Retina HD display but in reality it just has a resolution of 1334 by 750 so just a little bit over 720p HD at a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. The screen size has been increased from 4 inches to 4.7 inches signaling Apple's response to the desire of larger screens and for me at least 4.7 inches is the perfect sweet spot in terms of screen size it's not too big not too small it falls right in the middle it's still large enough for watching movies and typing but not large enough to the point of losing portability so you can still use it easily with just one hand so a big fan of this form factor and the screen itself is really nice and bright and also uh, awesome uh, color reproduction and something new Apple has added uh, is something called dual domain pixels for wider viewing angles and it's an IPS display with a fingerprint oleophobic coating on top so around the phone we have the power button here on the right side lo relocated from the top for easier access now due to the larger uh, display a nano sim card tray next to it on the left a ring and a silent switch as well as the volume up and down buttons. At the bottom we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack along with the microphone, lightning connector and also the speakers. Nothing up top. On the right, on the front here we have the 2 megapixel FaceTime camera with 720p HD video recording capabilities and also the ambient light sensor and the earpiece. Towards the bottom we have the home button which also acts as the sensor for the Touch ID fingerprint scanner. On the back we have the new 8 megapixel EyeSight camera with 1.5 micropixels, f2.2 aperture, it's also autofocus with focus pixels, which means it will dramatically reduce the time needed for refocusing. And what's interesting about the camera is it protrudes out quite a bit from the rest of the phone, uh, so when you lay it on the table, the phone won't be perfectly flat due to the camera bulge, but unless you're trying to intentionally make it wobble, uh, it shouldn't be much of an issue. Uh, however, the camera might have the potential to be damaged uh, easier due to its position, even if it has a sapphire crystal lens cover. Uh, it's still something to be aware of. Now, in terms of software, the iPhone 6 is running iOS 8 pre-installed out of the box. 
iOS 8 is really not that much different from iOS 7 in terms of design, so we still have the same look and feel, and of course, typical iOS applications like Messages, Calendar, Photos, App Store, iTunes Store, you name it. But we do have the new addition of a health app, and basically it's a health and fitness tracker. For example, you can go to health data, body measurements, body fat percentage, uh, and you can also add a data point and also share the data with other people as well. So yeah, it just allows you to see data uh, regarding your health over a week, a month, or a year, for example. So that's that with the new health app. And also now, if you double click the home button, in addition to getting your multitasking windows, you also receive an extra row of space at the top reserved for your recent contacts. So now you can easily access those people by double clicking the home button. And another thing that's really neat is something called reachability. So basically now you can double tap the home button. You don't even have to press it. Uh, it brings the top three rows of icons down, which are more difficult to access since you kind of have to scrooge your hands to access them. Uh, but now with reachability, you can double tap and the icons will drop down automatically for your convenience. So a really simple but useful feature. Another change was made to the notifications. So for your example, now you can be on a web page and a tweet comes in, for example, you can swipe down and reply to the notification right on the spot instead of manually going to the Twitter app to do that. An improvement was also made to the keyboard and it's called Quick Type. And uh, basically when you type, the keyboard takes you into account the content you're writing and also your writing style. So it can provide you with text predictions optimized for your writing so it can uh, save you some time uh, when you type. And also, for the first time, you can now install third-party keyboards, so you can uh, download one from the App Store and go to the Settings, General, Keyboard, Keyboards, Add a New Keyboard, and click on the keyboard installed. I have Swift Key, so that's a nice feature if you don't like the stock keyboard. And also, the search function, uh, it's called Spotlight Search, has been improved since it can now display results from the internet as well as from your phone. So if I search Apple, I can get results from the phone, uh, but also results from the web. In this case, Apple's a web address. So I can click on it and it will open Safari and it will direct me to the page. The camera has been improved. Of course, we have our typical camera modes, uh, but we do have the new addition of a time-lapse mode, which is nice. And I will have a full camera test of the iPhone 6 camera very soon to show you guys the picture quality and the new features. But so far, from what I've noticed, the shutter speed is amazingly fast and responsive and the pictures themselves look really sharp and detailed. So I have a picture here uh, that I took in low light and it looks pretty decent thanks to the True Tone flash. And we also have uh, some handy editing tools as well. So you can easily make your photos appear better on the fly. Here are some other pictures uh, I took. And again, they look really good, uh, accurate colors and very detailed again. But uh, I will have a full camera test soon in another video so you can see for yourself. So yeah, the iPhone 6, uh, especially with iOS 8, is just really uh, incredibly fluid and smooth. No lag or delay whatsoever. Just a really smooth and enjoyable experience all around. It really feels like the phone is made for the software and the software is made for the phone. So they're perfectly optimized with each other. This thing flies through everything you throw at it, be it watching YouTube videos, browsing the web, launching applications or whatever else you do with it. It's always fast and responsive every single time. And, I've, and all this is mostly due to the 1.4 gigahertz dual-core Apple A8 processor uh, with M8 motion coprocessor, which Apple claims to have up to 50% more CPU performance than before and also uh, up to 84% more GPU performance. And the power uh, from those chips can be evident in tasks like gaming, for example, because the gaming performance and experience is buttery smooth with any game, really. No delay, no lag, no issues at all to be honest with you, uh, when it comes to gaming. And also the speakers are really loud and clear too, uh, so an added bonus if you're uh, gaming or just listening to any sound in general. But I still think the HTC Boom Sound speakers are the best speakers for anything, but that's just my opinion. Uh, in terms of battery life, Apple claims it can go up to 11 hours with a single charge, and from my testing, I've only gotten about 9 hours, I believe, 
Uh, so the battery numbers aren't really impressive at all, but it should, uh, for the most part, get you through a typical day of use uh, just fine. But it really depends on your own personal usage patterns and what you do uh, with your device. So overall, I think the iPhone 6 is a great device for it, what it can do. It gets the job done, and it's definitely the best iPhone yet with the larger display and extra horsepower. But also, keep in mind, there are other devices out there on Android or Windows Phone, for example, that do exactly the same thing, if not better, and in some cases, cheaper as well. So it's really your decision, but if you like Apple and iOS, you can't go wrong with the best iPhone to date. I keep it locked here on the Moon 360 channel for more great coverage on the iPhone 6 over the coming days and week. Uh, so subscribe and give this video a thumbs up for more iPhone videos. It will help me a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, the review is certainly not finished and I would love for you to stick around to see even more great content coming up very soon. Once again, I'm Win360 and thank you so much for watching. Take care.